Hello YouTube, welcome over to Gaming House, and it's been a little while since I uploaded something, and I kind of apologize about that, because, well, I keep getting sucked into the goddamn game that I'm trying to review. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this off. Uh, I did play the beta, and I also knew what I was getting into when I got this game. Um, like, what seems to be a lot of the other reviews out there seem to be bashing it a little bit, and I'm, I will be bashing a little bit on things, but it's also, you know, not a bad game. Starting off, we have the story. The story is pretty short. I said in my impressions, it's kind of meh. The, uh, the lore is not explored in game, as opposed to, say, Mass Effect, which had the codex for all your little side tidbits that you wanted to go into and learn about. Uh, they have Grimmer cards, but the Grimmer cards are all on their website, which is not fun and not in game, so meh. Yeah, again, the deal, uh, uh da, 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 da. the story is, a uh, pretty lackluster. There's characters, but none of them are dived into. Your character's never dived into. Nothing is, again, nothing's really explained quite. So, all backgrounds and all that might be on the Grimmer cards, but I haven't checked them out. And again, those should just be in-game so that people can know about them. Also, there is no replayability, really, to the campaign. They have daily heroic missions that'll like pick a random mission and add a modifier to it and make it more difficult, but other than that, there's no reason to go back through the campaign whatsoever. And even at a higher difficulty, there are no more rewards or anything else. So that's a bit of a bummer there. On the side note though, teaming up with friends on co-op is pretty fun, especially on strikes. Uh, some downsides, though, about co-op, especially in the matchmaking for Strikes and in Crucible, is you can only hear people that are in your fire team. If you match up with other people, they're not they're playing with you, but they're not in your fire team, you can't hear them. So it kind of shoots themselves in the foot right there. Strikes can be challenging, especially on the Heroic. Uh, have footage of us trying to do the Heroic at level 28 and it's just nothing but us getting stomped on and tears were shed and beliefs were shaken. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a gripe about the strikes is bosses are nothing special. They're nothing but bullet sponges with overly, overly powerful moves. All have AoEs. Uh, you can't get close to them because the moment you get close, they have a devastating, almost practically one hit kill every time melee AoE effect, so your strategies are very limited to just you taking cover far away and shooting at them, which is kind of boring and repetitive, and I kind of wish that they made the bosses a little bit more entertaining and allowed us to strategize a bit more instead of, hey, you're going to hide here, shoot at him, and all that, and uh, just never, ever, 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 ever get within like two feet of them. Now the tower is your social hub in the game. That's where you can meet up with other people. That's where you go to get your vendors, turn in engrams, and all this other fun jazz. Now again, you can only hear people that are in your fire team. So unless you start inviting people to your fire team, anyone in the tower you're not going to hear. Also, vendors have limited use. Not once have I bought a weapon from the gunsmith. Not once, ever. The only thing I use him for is ammo synthesis, which is now only useful if you're actually doing like hard strikes and the raid. The only one that I see being useful is Cryptarch and the Vanguard and the Faction ones, but those are all pretty much there until you're level 20. You, don't, you can't get anything good from them until they're level 20. The vendors are kind of all useless. And there's also not a lot to do in the tower, uh, except for stuff that you want to explore and do on your own, like hold death matches. Yeah, I said death matches. Figure it out. I, I, we, we have death matches. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, there's a purple ball. There's a soccer ball, but there's no. A lot of people wanted a shooting range. There's no games or anything else. The emotes are kind of limited between you know dancing, pointing, waving, etc. Yeah, multiplayer. Oh man. First off, I'm not a fan of multiplayer nowadays. I don't know why it's just communities nowadays on multiplayer, it's all not playing objectives and KD this, KD that. Uh, from the beta, I played a little bit there and playing it now, it's still very auto rifle heavy. You barely see any scout rifles, and you barely see any pulse rifles. 
and most of the time the auto rifle can outdo them at the ranges besides the scout rifle, except the range that the scout rifle will be good at, you might as well be using the sniper rifle anyway. Uh, a little bit over the weekend, and a little bit uh, last couple of days, uh, with people getting exotics, even though damage levels are reduced, uh, the perks are still on the weapons, and exotics are looking to be pretty, pretty freaking overpowered. Uh, especially, uh, I had some experiences with Light Beware. I'm not calling out nerfs or anything, but it's got like a 0.5 charge time, and you have like no chance in hell of surviving that thing. Uh, there's not a lot of players in multiplayer either. Uh, most is 6v6 uh, to 3v3, and there's also a free for all. And some of the maps are just way too big for that small amount. And yeah, they give you a sparrow. Sometimes they'll give you other, like, weaponized vehicles, like the Pike or Interceptor, but they're just way too big for 6v6. Like, way too big. It's like, the, there's fluff. I mean, there's areas you can go and all that, but fighting takes place within certain areas, and there's just no point to a big open map. Oh, yeah, and then the, uh, this part here pisses me off the most. It really pisses me off the most, and it really discourages me in multiplayer, in multiplayer besides just getting the damn bounties done. And the rewards are random for end of the match. So you could be number one, number two, or any of that stuff, like back to back. And I'm talking from personal experience, and you will not get anything in the rewards. But people who were literally at the bottom of the list will get an engram and a rare weapon, or someone on the losing team will even get a legendary engram. It's like, are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That. That is discouraging. That is discouraging from me trying in multiplayer. Which I do try still, but it's, it's... It's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass, it's irritating, and it's a slap in the face, too. Because it's just... Uh... Anyway, switching over to some good things. Uh, the game looks great. It looks fantastic. The scenery is great if you ever, like, stop to look at Venus or... And you know, Mars, too. I don't know why I like Mars, even though it's just red, but Venus is definitely a pretty, 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 pretty planet. Uh, the game handles great. It's just, essentially, it handles like Halo. Everyone says it, it handles like Halo, except now you can aim down sights. Uh, the maps are actually still pretty big in this game. Uh, it's nowhere near what people were, like, anticipating in their minds. Or the comparison to Bungie did, which is they're bigger than Reach. It's kind of... I don't have any official measuring, but they feel they feel pretty big. And unfortunately, uh, they're big, but restrictive. There's a bunch of areas where there, there's insta-death if you go off a cliff. There's going there's turn-back areas. Uh, I played the beta, and on, the, on Earth now, there's a bunch of invisible walls where we used to be able to get on top of buildings and such, which isn't fun, and... I don't know, no reason why I should be restricted from going to certain areas on all that. Like, a uh, starter area in Russia, there's a big old fucking, like, pillar. Like, you turn around, you see this big pillar in the middle of this fucking river lake thing. It's like, I'm pretty sure if I tried hard enough, I could try to get over there, but, you know, you never can, because you'll just die. And it's, it's just lame to discourage exploring like that and restricting yourself. Another part is grinding. Uh, I can grind like it's my goddamn day job, and I have rotted on this game and grinded a lot. It's distracted me from doing this review. And grinding may or may not be your forte slash favor, because you have to grind a lot, and this game has plenty of moments of slapping the face, such as getting legendary engrams and getting blue uh, rare gear out of them. Like, all my rare gear I've either bought or I've got out of blue engrams. I've not once gotten a good thing out of Legendary Ingram, uh, wait, no, that's a lie, I got an exotic launcher. But be prepared to grind in this game. So if you don't like grinding, well, tough shit. Uh, you can probably get through the story and all that with uncommon gear, but if you want the really badass looking gear, and you want to upgrade that badass gear to badass three ultimate badass levels, you're gonna have to grind, unfortunately, and grind, grind, grind you will. And one of my gripes about it is they have anti-grinding things such as they top off the Vanguard marks and the Crucible marks at 100 a week, and I pretty much get that done within a day or two. And it's pretty freaking sad, 
because you have to wait weeks on end to get certain gear at a time if you're really unlucky with engrams and such. And that's gonna be that's gonna be all my points. Uh, overall score for the game, I give it a seven out of ten. A solid seven out of ten. The it's pretty uh, bare bones kind of for story, but it's a fun game to play. It handles well. It looks good. Uh, I'd say for any other people, this range is anywhere between eight and a six, depending on your views of DLC. DLC is going to be a primary focus on this game. And it kind of irks me, but at the same time it doesn't, because they kind of said that they, hey, we're going to do DLC, it's going to expand it, and that's kind of the excuse why everything is kind of bare bones and not there also for story and other stuff, and why some of these maps seem pretty empty. So if you don't like that stuff, you know, may, your, your opinion may be lower, but I'd say this is, this is a 7. Went out to buy a plant, and we were given a seed that'll grow into said plant, so if you don't have patience for this... This will eventually be a 9 out of 10. I would say that. This game has potential to be 9 out of 10 and a full, like, game of the year release. But if you're waiting for something else to play besides Call of Duty, or if you don't want to get Call of Duty and you're hungering for another shooter, get this game. This is a fun game to play, especially if you've got friends to play it. Go ahead and like, subscribe, comment. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of Destiny in the comment section. As always, there's Twitter where you can follow me on my updates where I try <laughs> try to say I'm doing something and sometimes turn around and not do it, such as this review. And as always, you're welcome to come back over to Gaming House for more gameplay and commentary.